Really, Jim. Thanks, Mart. This has been a good roundup, Mart. I guess you fellas can load that stock tomorrow without any help from me, though. Oh, I reckon. While I'm down in Texas, I'll kind of look around. I might get some new ideas about running livestock. Texas? Well, I didn't know you were figuring on taking a trip, Tim. Sandy Hopkins is having a birthday. His niece wrote me about it. Said she's putting on a big surprise shindig for him. Well, I suppose Buck Roberts will be there too, huh? You know he will. He'll get quite a kick out of meeting Sandy's niece for the first time, too. Yeah. It's about time you Rough Riders were getting together again. Well, we haven't been together for quite a spell, but I can't think of a better excuse for a reunion than Sandy's birthday, can you? <laughs> That's excuse enough. Well, if you want to get in touch with me about anything, just wire me in Kara Sandy's hotel, Dodge Town, Texas. All right, have a good time. You know I will. Go uh, so on, boys. Bye, Bye Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye, Bye, Sam. for a change, Sandy. <laughs> Lucky nothing. You know I always lose my shirt in these games. Except that you ain't up to form tonight, John. What's wrong? Got something on your mind? You want to spill it? Yes, I... I got this letter from Kansas City today. Read it. never did say nothing about you, Mrs. John. And I guess everybody around here, including myself, just took it for granted that she was dead. Yes, I know. It's been about 20 years since we parted. Even I thought she was dead. Anyway, Dave always believed that his mother passed away when he was a baby. Well, what are you going to do? It's going to be an awful shock to the kid. That's why I've got to think about it. I can't tell him until I know just how to put it to him. She's his mother, and I want him to respect that fact. No matter what mistakes we made as man and wife. That's right, Captain. But maybe it's like she says in the letter. You can start all over again. Then it won't be so tough on Dave. Perhaps. Go on, deal. Oh, you're no mood for cards tonight, John. Yes, go on. I just want to get it off my mind for a spell. Well, if it's kind of late, don't you think you'd better go over and close up the saloon? No, no hurry. I can trust Pete to handle things. Go ahead, deal them. Hello, Pete. I wish you hadn't come here, Logan. I could have met you on the outside. Take it easy. What are back doors for? Joe, keep his eyes peeled for Dodge. Did he get that letter today? Mm, yeah. Sure seemed to knock him for a loop. What'd he do about it? Well, the old man didn't tell the son. He just shoved the letter in his pocket and said he'd have to figure a way to break the news to Dave. Uh, who's the woman that's going to be Mrs. Dodge? Uh, you'll be surprised to know who I got to be Mrs. Dodge. 
And when she's his widow, she takes over everything. The bank, the store, the saloon, the whole works. I get it. I got her hiding on until we're set for her. Say about Rad. Did he meet the sheriff? Oh, yeah. He's sitting in the poker game now with that old plug at the sheriff's range. Outside of town. Good. Now, I'll take care of Dodge when he finishes that pinochle game across the street. You know what to do when it's all over. Just use your head and you'll be running this one instead of tending barn it. Come on, Bill. Uh, you're sure that nobody seen you come in? Nobody saw me ride into town and nobody's gonna see me go out. Hiya, Smithy. Hello, Smithy. Oh, Dave. Mary, you're looking kind of late, aren't you? Yeah, kind of, but I'm all through now. Then you might as well walk along with us. Ooh, don't mind if I do. Being it's alongside of a pretty gal. Smithy, you're an old flatter. Yeah, but I'll bet you I wouldn't have to look far to find a body to back me up. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, Smithy. They don't come any prettier. Well, what I'd like to know is, when are you two young ones going to get married? Oh, one of these days. As soon as I've saved enough money out of my job at the Simmons Ranch to buy a little spread on. But I'm buying them one for a wedding present. And I'm staking them to their furniture. <laughs> if that uncle of yours and your pa are pinochling in there again tonight, how come they ain't raising the roof? They are awfully quiet. Yeah, but they finally learned to play the game without fighting. <laughs> Hey, we're losing our reputation by being too peaceful like. Let's fool them. You got a double pinochle again? Yes, read them we. I told you you didn't know nothing about the game. Listen, I've been the champ team pinochle player 14 years. And I could skin the pants off of my partners, Buck Rock and Tim McCall, and they were good pinochle players, too. Then you better stop hotel keeping and go back to manhunting, because you sure gummed up your technique. Listen, you ain't telling me how to play pinochle, are you? I ain't, eh? Well, I been. Danny, they're really angry. One of these nights, they're going to kill each other in one of them brawls. Listen, no beer slinging amateurs ever beat me yet. And I'll bet you a hundred to ten that you can't draw no more doubles. At least than why you draw them out of your cup. Why, you want a little cuss accusing me of cheating? Oh, no, you don't. Uh, Uncle Sandy, fighting over a silly card game. Why, you both ought to be ashamed of yourself. He accused me of cheating. Well, maybe you did. Ain't natural for a man to draw three doubles in a row. You ought to be shocked for being so lucky. Well, you gotta admit what, Russ? I ain't admitting nothing. You get on upstairs way past your bedtime. Go ahead, Mary, I'll handle them. You ain't handling nothing. You go on, get on home to that ranch. Go ahead. Poor Mike Simmons decides to hire himself another foreman. And I take this old saddle flat foot on for another game and that hundred dollars. All right, Bob, but you hold your temper. You know, one of these days, you two are going to let that card game break up a swell friendship. So long, Pop. So long, Dave. I bet you they still believe they saved you from Papa me off. <laughs> and now they're going to have all the fun of helping us make up again. <laughs> well, here's your winnings. I better get across and help Pete close up. Say, hey. oh, I'll drop over tomorrow and make a payment on the mortgage you hold on this hotel. You know, I hope you get this thing washed up one of these days. Now, you take your time about that. Why, I wouldn't crack down on you if you never paid it. Thanks. Good night, Sandy. Good night. I'll get him as he goes past that corner, coming from the hotel to the saloon. You stick around after it's over and see what happens. Get ready. Here he comes.
He's dead. Oh, I knew it. Mr. Dodge. What happened? Where's Uncle Sandy? Well, he rode off after he shot him. Smitty here said they were fighting like mad again. Over their pinochle game. Well, we heard him, didn't we, Miss Mary? Yes. Uh, you see there, Luke? Right out and get the sheriff. He's at his ranch. You bet. Hopkins will hang for this, or I'm crazy. Who was that? I didn't see. I don't know. Pete, Uncle Sandy couldn't have done this. They quarreled, yes, but... We better take him over to the office. Beginning tomorrow, we start taking over the town. That ex United States Marshal Sandy Hopkins is on your trail, Bird. Well, what of it? All we've got to do is bump him off. Wait, I got a better idea. I want him alive. He's going to come in handy getting Mrs. Dodge into town. You fellas squat around here like you don't know he's coming, and I'll handle him. you have. Better take that advice yourself, Marshal. Put him up. Get his horse and climb to the saddle. You get there ahead of him, put Stella wise. All right, boys, you know what to do. Bill's going on ahead, and we'll go back to town as planned. He knows the next move, so get going. Stranger, reckon you don't you? That's right. What happened? We got the best rooms in the state of Texas. Fact is, we got the only bathtub with running water this side of Kansas City. Well, I can certainly use that. <laughs> Where's Sandy Hopkins? Is he around? No, I uh, see. Marshal Tim. Why, Mary. Why, 
But look at you with long dresses on and... Well, you're a grown woman at last, aren't you? What's the matter? Oh, everything. Where's Sandy? I don't know, but something terrible has happened. Come on, tell me all about it. Find out about this. This must all be just a terrible nightmare. The robbing of the stage, the murdering of the driver and the other passengers. And then when they brought me here, because they said it wasn't in their plans to murder women, I, well, I just couldn't believe I was Anne Dodge on my way to join my husband and my son. You Ann Dodge, the wife of John Dodge of Dodge Town, Texas? You know my husband and my son? Yes, ma'am. Uh, who are you? Why are you here? Why, them murdering polecats hogtied me and threw me in here after they killed... I'm Sandy Hopkins, ma'am, and I run the hotel in Dodgetown. Your son Dave is a mighty fine lad, and he's doing all right by himself. He must be, because his father's such a fine man. How is John? Well, he didn't come any better than John Dodge. He was one of the best friends I ever had. Ever had? Well, just hold on to yourself, ma'am. He went awful quick, but he went happy. He never knew what hit him. And some folks say that's the best way to go after all. the cannon easy and stick them up. Who, who are you? What do you want? I want some water and some grub. I haven't had any for days. So get inside and lead me to it. You, we can't go in there. What do you mean we can't go in there? It's a shack in it. It's got grub in it. Right at your spurs. Marshal Hopkins. This is a bit of luck. Right into my hands. Don't look so puzzled. You know me. Remember? You put me in a penitentiary about a year ago down in Arizona. Yeah. For wrestling. If I'm any judge, that's where you ought to be now. I told you there wasn't a jail strong enough to hold me. And I also told you when I got out, I'd be looking you up, and here you are. Hey, wait a minute. He's our prisoner. You're amongst friends. All right. I told you I was hungry. 
Dish out some grub and watch your step. Say, you fellas saddle up while I go over to the shack and get a pot of coffee off of Steve. Sit down. Get over by the window where I can watch you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Don't touch that gun unless you feel lucky. Say, what are you saving him for? Because me, I'd knock him off right now. Well, it ain't no deal to bump off lawmen. It's too risky for what we got in mind. Go on back where you come from. I gotta keep an eye on you, too. Now, who's the filly? Listen, you're speaking about Mrs. John Dodge. So what? She's the wife of my best friend, whom these skunks murdered last night. Kidnapped her from her stage and brought her here the same as they hogtied me. Ain't that too bad. They're gonna hang you this time when they catch up with you, Robbins. You hope. I know it. that door. Now speak your piece and speak it fast. What do you want? What is this, Steve? Logan will break your neck for bringing in strangers. I ain't told him nothing. Well, then who is he? What does he want? Shut up. None of your business. I told you it was traveling. Keep your shirts on. I want to thank you for the grub. You two mugs want to do me a favor. Make that tin horn sweat before you skin him. And don't make a move till I get out of here. So long. Hey, you ain't going no place. instead of playing poker with the sheriff. Then you'd have seen the fireworks. Yeah, I just got through telling Dave and Mary that Sandy and John had draw fire in one of them card brawls sometime. Kind of like a hunch, huh? Yeah, that's it, kind of like... Yeah, I got a doped out different. Especially with Hopkins being an ex-lawman and knowing all the tricks. Yeah. You sure are smart in that sheriff, Miss Posse, ain't he? Sure is. Well, what do you mean, Pete? You got it doped out different. I knew of a lawman back in Kansas that went crooked once and headed a bunch of thieving killers. His name was Ted Cook. Being a deputy U.S. Marshal, it took him years to catch up with him. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, the fact is that this case is so much like that one that Hopkins could have got his idea. You're from. a liar. Well, what do you think you know about it? I happen to be the United States Marshal that wound it up. The man you're speaking about, Ted Cook, was framed. But it ain't healthy for a United States Marshal around here right now. Since one of them is charged with killing a man here last night. Hold it! And a fast on the draw, ain't you, stranger? Might pay you to remember that. Black lemon soda. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I reckon that calls for the drinks on the house. Come on, fellas, and join the marshal. Never mind. 
I drink alone and pay for it. If I were you, I'd forget about that Kansas story. Or I'm liable to pick you up for what you know about it. You know, I'm still hunting for a couple of fellows that got away on that deal. Well, I'd say if that's more number, it ain't healthy to tangle with. Well, here's one man he ain't got bluff. I'm gonna help see the Dodgers killer gets what's coming to him. Yeah, that's one thing we all got to look after, all right. How come he made a liar out of you, Pete? He seemed to know what he was talking about, too. Yeah, sure he did. That's because he's a liar himself. You know, he pulled that stunt to protect Hopkins? He thinks he's doing it behind a U.S. badge that gives him special privileges. Yeah. Hey, Pete, buy Smithy a beer. Oh, yeah. Somebody in this room. Speak up or I'll start shooting. You couldn't hit me with a handful of buckshot. Oh, fuck. <laughs> how are you, fellow? Fine, damn, how what? are you? Why did you get in? Oh, just a while ago. I rode in just as you were going into the saloon. I registered under the name of John Robbins. You know, we can't be seen together. The room's just across the hall. I guess you know Sandy's in the jam. Yeah, I know, but how did you find out? I've seen him. I can't figure out is why they brung me here and you too. I can't either, Mr. Hopkins. Ooh, ooh. Those bandits coming back with supplies. We're going to get that wagon while the others are away. Yeah? But how? Would we tied with this confounded cowhide? Look, I just remembered I had this knife in my bag. Turn around, Mr. Hopkins, and I'll cut you loose. Come on. I never knew a woman could think so fast before. Now let's watch your fun. Look, that rope on the wall. You can grab him and tie him. Yes. You get behind the door. Here's your glove. Back to town like Logan Well, the way this whole thing stacks up, they're trying to put this murder right in Sandy's lap. But we've got to act accordingly. That's about right, Tim. You gotta start in by prying the old man Dodge's affairs. The back room in that saloon the Dodge used for an office. Do you have to go through the saloon to get into the office? There's a back door. That's good enough for me. It's right where I'm heading. See you later. Just a minute.
Right up, hold the law? Yeah. All in red, here's your badge. As soon as the other men get some rest, we'll start out again on Sandy's trail, so stick around. Now that I got the authority, Sheriff, I'm gonna prove Pete's hunch and mine that Hopkins didn't kill Dodd just because he lost his head. There's something bigger behind it. When a man allows a hunch to interfere with his horse set, he's apt to get into trouble. I thought I made that clear in the saloon last night. Who are you? United States Marshal McCall. Sandy Hopkins was an old pal of mine when he was in the service. I came here to find him, and whoever it was that killed John Dodd. He's going to be a lot of help, Sheriff. All you government fellows are alike. A bunch of politicians, thicker and thieves when you get together. Take your hand off that gun, get up on your feet. Now hold on, Marshal. It didn't mean nothing, it's just that the whole town is surrounded up over the kill in the Dodge. If Sandy Hopkins is guilty, he'll pay the penalty the same as anybody else. But if I were you, Sheriff, I'd make sure the next time I swore in a deputy, it was one that had some respect for his government. I know, but he's all right. He's just a little hot-headed. Go on now and get outside and go off. I want to talk to Mark. Sit down, Mark. I hope we don't cause no trouble when that wagon rolls in. No, we'll have the folks in this town so worked up they'll have Hopkins strung up before the marshal will turn around. He ain't figuring on him come breezing in here, is he? No. See, I'll duck over the saloon to meet the boys when they get here. You get to work in that blacksmith. All right. We're on the way. Good. Steve, you keep your eye out for Logan. The rest of you boys spread out. So I ain't found out a dang thing except from what everybody else knows. But I'll eat the shoe leather off of my boots if Sandy Hopkins is within 30 miles of this man. Do you think he's guilty? Well, I don't know. All the evidence points that he's done it. Public opinion says he did. I just come from Dodge's funeral and the people took it pretty hard, especially young Dodge. It's not very to walk over to the hotel with me, Dave. Please try to believe Uncle Sandy didn't do it, and that Marshal Tim will prove it. I'm trying, Mary. Well, I, I'll see you later. I, we'll see how Pete and Luke are coming with Pop's things. If that don't prove he had a reason for killing the boss, I'll eat it. What's that? A mortgage on Sandy Hopkins Hotel. I didn't know Pop had this. Nor did anybody else. It ain't even been recorded yet. That was due to be paid off the day your Pop was murdered. Now, there's a motive for you, kid, if I ever seen one. Maybe Sandy didn't have the money. Maybe his bad blood over this here mortgage to that card game. I'm going to find Sandy Hopkins if it's the last thing I ever do. Better tell him how it all was. Just a minute, kid. I guess this will say more than I can. It came the day your pop was killed. Well, I guess he was going to tell you all about him. And about her, too. I uh, guess he figured he didn't have the chance to do it right. But she didn't die like we all thought, and he knew it. They were separated when you were just a baby. So they couldn't get along together. The last thing he said was that he wanted you to respect the fact that she was your mother. And to remember that, too, in case anything happened to him. I guess he meant, I guess he meant about his uh, property and all. Good morning, Mr. Logan. Oh, good morning. Waiting for someone? Yes, uh, waiting to catch Dave Dodge. You see, I'm interested in buying a saloon in the store that if I can get him to sell. Had a deal with his father, that's before the old man was killed. Oh, is that so? Uh, you didn't happen to notice, miss, whether he came back to town or went on to the Simmons Ranch. He's over at the saloon. Oh, thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. 
Dr. Robbins. Oh, good morning. I hope you rested well. I did. Say, did I hear you call that fellow Logan? Yes, Mr. Bert Logan. Do you know him? Bert Logan. No, I... I guess I was wrong. Thanks ever so much. Well, here she is, ma'am. Your home. The most pleasurable little town in the whole of Texas. I've lived here all my life. And you can be mighty proud of John for what he's done for this town. Why, there ain't a man here that wouldn't have laid down his life for him. No, sir. Well. Here comes Hopkins. Sandy Hopkins is back. Well, we said we'd string him up, didn't we? Yeah. Well, come on, fellas. What are we waiting on? Come on, men. Come on, let's go get him. <laughs> Pete. Come on down there and keep things moving. I just saw it. Like a nice crowd turned out to welcome you, man. They must know you was coming. How are you, David? I want to talk to you, Sandy, about a lot of things. David, my boy, my son. His mother? Well, that must be John's wife. Hey, why waste a lot of words? He killed your father, didn't he? Well, what are we waiting on? Let's string him up. What? I killed his father? What are you saying? What's the matter with all these people? Are they crazy? You tell them, ma'am, what happened. You killed my husband? And you said you were his friend when you took me off that stage at High Point. What? Why, David, he may plan to kill me, too. Well, take me home, son. That settles it. Let's bring him up. There's a rope waiting around the corner. Oh, now, keep me yourself. Now, David, you've got to do something. Stop them. Stop them. Hold on. What's going on out there? Let's find out. Marshal Tim, they've got Uncle Sandy. They're going to hang him. Do something. Don't you worry. Boss, this hanging's too good for you. Yes, after killing the best friend this town ever had. Yeah, and framing to kill Dodger's wife, too. Just to get out of paying that mortgage. Hurry up and let's get it over with. Wait till you hear what I have to say. That's right, boys. Let's not be too hasty. He killed your old man, didn't he? Go ahead, men. If you loved my husband for what he did for you in this town. Just a minute. There'll be no hanging here today. Turn him loose. This man killed my husband, and he's going to pay for it. How about it, folks? You bet. Yes. What are we going to do right now? Now? If he's guilty, he will pay for it. But he's going to have a fair trial first. Now, take that rope off him. Sheriff, take him down to the jail and lock him up. What time you got here to stop these crazy lunatics? Hold it. I'll scatter out all of it. David, take me home, please. I'm sorry, Mother, but I still want to hear what Sandy has to say. The United States Marshal in the back isn't very smart. Might come up your deal. Hey, got Hopkins. What are you worrying about? Who are you? I was a guest at your shack yesterday, Logan. Thought you said you were heading for the border. I changed my mind. I'm cutting myself in on your deal. My deal? I don't get you. You will. Come on inside and we'll talk over. Start talking, you bonehead. I was sitting on the porch and 
He came up and held me up and said he was hungry. He's an escaped convict, heading for Mexico. Don't argue with me. Jim, now you know I wouldn't do a thing like that. Of course I know you didn't do it. But you're going to be a lot safer in there than outside with that mob. Oh. But Marshal Tim, I don't understand. Why didn't you tell them? Because, honey, we got to give Marshal Roberts a chance to get the lowdown on the gang that's behind all this. Right, Marshal? That's right. So Buck did get here after all. You knew he'd get here. <laughs> Sorry, Robin. It looks like you're barking up the wrong tree. Come on, sit down. There's no deal. I want to buy a partnership with Mrs. Dodge. Figured she needs some legitimate cash in order to help her run her affairs in this town. Did you say Mrs. Dodge? Yeah. Oh, we've been friends for years, that is. Ever since she and her husband split up. She used to tend bar for me in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? Keep polishing your glasses. Yeah. That's what's so funny about it. I happened to be in a back room last night, and I didn't have to go any further than Dodge's Bible to find this. Take a look at it. It says on the back, John Dodge and Ann Green, united and married June 1st, 1879. Kansas City photocopy. You know, Logan, this Mrs. Dodge doesn't look any more like your Mrs. Dodge than I look like Abe Lincoln, not does she? All right, Robbins, you win. She's not Mrs. Dodds. But remember, this is my deal, and I'm giving the orders. It's all right with me. As long as you begin at the beginning and tell me how you expect to get away with it. Supposing the real Mrs. Dodge shows up. She won't. She's been dead for two years. Only Dodds didn't know it. He wouldn't cut me in on the grave he's getting out of this town, so I decided to take over. And you started in by killing him, huh? Well, I wouldn't say that. I just eliminated him. Still all right with me. Nice way to put it. Put you all under arrest. Another thing I'm wanting to explain is... What's that? That's Marshal Buck Roberts, getting to know the real killer of your father. Open that door, Sheriff. This isn't your mother. He's working with Logan and his gang. Logan? Hey, let me out of this coop, Tim. Sandy, you were always good at handling widows. See if you can get some information out of this one. Buck and I will take charge of things. Marshal Tim, Dave's going after Logan. They'll kill him. And you're going back to the hotel and stay there. Buck and I will look after Dave. We'll have the whole matter cleared up in no time. Now run along. to the old mine. Keep me covered and then follow me there. Got away, probably for the same place. Let's go.
going to give you more of a break than you gave my father. Load up. Kid's in trouble, Tim. You take the tunnel and I'll take the shaft. Wait a minute. We ain't gonna kill you yet. We need you. We'll never get out of here with the marshals on our trail. Got you covered in there. Come out with your hands in the air. We ain't coming, Marshal. Not unless you want us to bring out Dave Dodds dead. Never mind me, Marshal. Come and get him. We can deal with you, Marshal. It's the kid's life for our getaway. Throw in your gun, we'll bring him out. Well, I guess we've got to do it, Buck. Here come our guns. All right, Joe, pick them up. We'll get them two marshals anyway on our way out. All right, marshals, come out in the open. Don't do it, they'll kill you. Oh, no, they won't. Get over there with the rest of your gang. How you doing, kid? I'm all right. I just clipped my hand a little. Let's get these birds to jail and release Sandy. Come on, move out. I've done a heap of man hunting in my day, ma'am, but this is the first time I ever got mixed up with a lady crook. Let alone being in jail with one. Well, you don't think I'm enjoying it, do you? How come that you got mixed up with that ornery mess of critters? <laughs> oh, stop that sniffing. <laughs> but you don't understand, Mr. Hopkins. See, I was married when I was pretty young, and my husband turned out to be all bad, and got us in a mess of trouble. But I never did a wrong thing in my life, Mr. Hopkins. Honest, I didn't. <laughs> but you wrote the letter saying you were the boy's mother, didn't you? Didn't you? Well, yes, I did, but... Well, they made me do it. They threatened to kill me if I didn't. <laughs> Mr. Hopkins. These two marshals are, are friends of yours. Now, why couldn't you say that I was a prisoner in that shack, same as you were? After all, I did let you free. They believe you, Mr. Hopkins, and then you could get me out of all this. I believe you got something there, ma'am. Yes, yes, I will get you out of here. Oh, Mr. Hopkins, I knew you would. I'll get you out of here and I'll send you to the penitentiary for 20 years. Why, oh. oh, you dirty, double-crossing little flat foot, you... Don't you hit me, you she-cat! All of them. Keep away from me, you black widow. Oh, shut up, you little runt. Runt? Come on, get in there next door to your girlfriend. Well, now that the party's over, how about letting me on this place? Let me have that key shot, will you? All right, Sandy. I've never been so glad to get rid of a woman. Give me my cannon. Kind of looks like you got a full house, Sheriff. Yeah, but I never expected to be a hold of the female for trial. 
Neither did we when we started this thing. We might have known it had happened sometime, though, since we've been trailing with a fellow who's a kind of a specialist on widows. So I noticed. Now listen, you two, you just cut it out. I'm all for women for life. Especially them kind. Says you. Says me. Bye, Sheriff. Along, boys. Is everything all right, Uncle Sandy? Everything is just fine, honey. I'll get my horse and ride you fellas out of town. Well, thanks for everything, Marshal. Thank you, Marshal Tim. That's all right, Mary. Goodbye, Mr. Roberts. Goodbye. Please come back soon. I'll do that, providing I get an invitation to the wedding. And that won't be long. <laughs> Good luck. Bye. Well, them fellas sure cleaned this town up mighty quick, didn't they? I'll say they did. to think that we came down here to give this old coyote a birthday party. Uh, it almost turned out to be a necktie party, didn't it? It <laughs> sure did. Now I recollect it was my birthday, wasn't it? That's right, it was. Say, Tim, I got an idea. Sandy, suppose you bring the young folks up to the ranch and I'll throw a real party, a wedding party. What do you say? Market paid, Buck. You two gophers know how I feel about what you've done for me. Hey, are you serious about that? I sure be. Tim, let's get out of here before he turns 100% jackass and starts bawling. I think you're right. I'm going back to Wyoming right now. And me to Arizona. So long, Rough Rider. So long, Rough Rider. Uh, ride is right. Be well, Rough Rider. Uh, ride is right. Sing again. Every wrestler and gorilla man, the rough rider's watch the train.